In this video, we're going to take a look at your topic three test review. You're going to be given a polynomial and it will not be in standard form. You need to move this into standard form. And to do that, we're going to arrange each term in descending degree order. So if you look at each term, here's my degree of three. I have a degree of two here. 4x is a degree of 1, and 20 would be a degree of 0. So to write this in standard form, we would have x cubed plus 5x squared plus 4x plus 20. Terms are separated by either a plus or a minus. So when I look at this polynomial, I have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms. Your leading coefficient is the number in front of the variable of the highest degree. So if we always, 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 always try to go, go back to your standard form. If you look at your standard form, here's your highest degree. The number, and you don't see it, but what's there is a one. So your leading coefficient is one. The degree of the polynomial is the highest, the term, see how it has the highest degree? This is a degree of three. And again, if you are in standard form, it's going to be the exponent that you see on your first term. If we are a degree of three, that means if we classify this polynomial by degree, this is a cubic. And now n behavior. n behavior is dependent on degree and leading coefficient. So you first you look at your degree. Your degree, that is an, three is an odd number. So it is odd. And then when it comes to looking at, let's write it off here. So this is odd. Looking at your leading coefficient, notice it's positive. So your end behavior is odd positive. Now when we're talking end behavior, we're looking at the direction the graph is moving. So if your end behavior, if it's ever positive, you've got something going up and to the right. If your degree is odd, your end behavior goes in opposite directions. So this would look something like that. So as X approaches, positive infinity, so as my x values are getting bigger, my y values are also getting bigger. They're going up to positive infinity. As x approaches negative infinity, so as we now move this direction, my x values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, while well, my y values are also getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They're going down, so y is approaching negative infinity. And now let's talk symmetry. We have these algebraic rules that we can follow to determine if a function is considered even or odd. And now don't confuse even and odd symmetry with even and odd end behavior. They are two different things. If a graph is even, if a function is even, that means it is symmetric about the y-axis. If a graph is odd or a function is odd, it is symmetric about the origin. So we have this little test that we can perform. If you just substitute negative x into your original function, if what comes out is exactly the same as your original function, meaning the signs do not change, it is even. If you input negative x for all of your x's and all of your signs change on your original function, it's odd. If maybe you have some signs change and some signs do not, it is neither. So let's take a look at this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to input negative x for all of my x's. And then we'll just simplify. Okay, so if I raise a negative number to an odd power, it's going to stay negative. Here, any negative number raised to an even power would turn positive. 
So therefore we get 5x squared here, four times negative x. Okay, so now my sign is changing and it's plus 20, nothing happens to it. So if we compare, notice here, my signs changed. Here, they didn't. Over here, they changed. And here, they did not. So this one is neither. And now let's talk zeros. So the number of zeros your function has is dependent on the degree of the function. So this function we're working with is a degree of three. So if you have a degree of three, well, that means you're going to have three zeros. Some of those zeros might manifest as an x-intercept, but some of the zeros might be complex, which then of course would not cross the x-axis. So here we are given that one of the zeros is negative five we're going to find the remaining zeros. So to do this, we're going to use synthetic division. I'm going to divide this polynomial by negative five, which I know is a zero. Start doing my synthetic division. Okay, and so now in here, we put the, the coefficients of each term. You have to make sure you are in descending degree order. This should be in standard form. So make sure before you put anything up here, you are in standard form. So my leading coefficient here is one, is that five, four, and 20. Drop down the one, negative five times one is negative five. Let's add, I get zero, negative five, times zero is zero. Bring down the four. Four plus zero is four. Negative five times four is negative 20. Now we add these, we get zero, and we should get a zero. This is your remainder. If you do not get a zero, at this time, go back and take a look to see if you did something wrong. More often than not, maybe you didn't move your, your polynomial into standard form, but you should always get a zero because we, are, we were already told that negative five is a zero, so therefore it would have a remainder of zero. What is left, this is gonna be your constant, first degree, second degree. So this is x squared, I don't have an x term, so remember, what we've done here is we've essentially factored our cubic. We were already told that x equals negative 5 is a 0, so we, this is x plus 5 times x squared plus 4. And we already know here x equals negative 5, so now we need to find the zeros here. So if I have x squared plus 4, I'm using my zero product property in order to solve for my zeros. Here, I'm gonna subtract four from both sides. And now to clear that square, I would take the square root of both sides. Now, notice you have a negative under the radical. If you have a negative under the radical, you're gonna have a complex solution. That negative comes out as an I. So that means I have X equals plus or minus, square root of four is two, that negative comes out as an I. So here's my other two zeros. We had one zero at X equals negative five. I'm expecting to see three zeros. So I get X equals two I and x equals negative 2i. 